Greetings, Matt from Hidden Machine here once again with another Roundup video. If you're not familiar, these are videos where I just give some uh, rapid fire quick reviews on games that I've been playing lately. Maybe you'll learn about a new game, or maybe you want to hop down in the comments and tell me about what you've been playing. Of course, I am always down to play a new game. So if you got something you want to suggest, or you just want to share how you feel about what you've been playing lately, Meet me down in the comments or hop on the Hidden Machine Discord. Anyway, I've played a bunch of stuff lately, let's get into it. Backpack Hero is a game that was suggested to me while I was playing the Resident Evil 4 Remake. I was mentioning how much I enjoy doing the inventory management portion of the Resident Evil games, and someone said, hey, this will be right up your alley. So I checked it out, and they were right. The game is a roguelite deck builder that is currently in early access, but it has a free demo that you can check out right now. Your deck in this game is represented by the contents of your backpack. You have different types of armor, weapons, and special items, and it's all got sort of a classic turn-based RPG feel to the inventory and combat. You do some dungeon crawling, running into various groups of enemies, and after each battle, you get to pick through a pile of loot. This is where the organizational aspect comes in. You have a finite number of slots in your backpack, very similar to your case in the Resident Evil games. The orientation and placement of different items can give you different buffs. For instance, a piece of armor might give a plus one in defense to any other pieces of armor that are adjacent or diagonal to it. Those systems become more complex as you get deeper into the game, and I get the impression that different characters will have different abilities, but those other characters are not available in this demo. The game entered early access back in August of 22, and so far, it seems like it's shaping up really nicely. They recently hit 700 unique items that you can find in the game. I haven't picked up the full version yet, but it's on my Steam wishlist, and I will be grabbing it eventually. Next up is Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine. Dr. F Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine. It doesn't sound real when I say it for some reason. <laughs> this is another demo that I played recently. It's a mashup of the old Sega game, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, and Super Meat Boy. If you haven't played Mean Bean Machine, it's just a reskin of a game called Puyo Puyo, which was also reskinned as Kirby's Avalanche on the SNES. You have to match the colors of the falling blobs to clear them out, and you can do all sorts of combos for extra points. Mean Meat Machine takes that core concept of the puzzler matching blobs thing and then adds Super Meat Boy style hazards to the mix, forcing the player to be much more aware of their environment and the timing of every single action. I love the puzzle aspect of this game, and I've had a lot of fun with Super Meat Boy, but I had a hard time adjusting to Mean Meat Machine. I play a game like Mean Bean Machine more for relaxation, and having to be hyper-focused on all of these stage hazards, it just made the whole experience kind of stressful. It handles well, and it looks really nice, but personally, I just didn't care for the gameplay. That said, I do think that some people will get really into this one, especially if you do find that you like a marriage of those two games. I mean, this does it really well for what it is. I just, I don't know. I want to play a puzzle game, or I want to play Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy, if you will. Putting them together just, I don't know, didn't click for me, but maybe for you. Next up, I'm going to take you back to the past to play a game where you blast some alien ass. Uh, it's Iron Meat. This is another demo. Uh, a lot of demos on this roundup, but this is a great demo for a game that is coming out later this year. Iron Meat. Basically, it's a classic 2D Contra style run and gun. The demo has a few different stages for you to check out, and each one provides its own unique elements that build on the core tenets of the genre. 
Everything is placed really well, and the controls feel great. The weapons work the way you'd expect them to, and overall, it's just really, really tight. I have nothing negative to say about this demo. It's really, really good. If you like Contra or any of those old run and gun games, I think you're gonna really have a lot of fun with this. And I will definitely be picking up the full game when it drops this October. Next up, we've got another game where I have no idea how to pronounce the title. Now, in the past, uh, many times actually, I've reached out to devs on Twitter or through the contact forms on their website to ask, uh, how do you pronounce this? I've never gotten a response to any of those inquiries. So, uh, Herodes, 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 Her Hero Herodes, I, don't, I have no idea what this word is. Please, if you can tell me, educate me down in the comments. Uh, this is a cool game, but I have no idea how to pronounce it. And when I looked it up, I looked at different Let's Plays and different reviews of the game. Every YouTuber had their own unique pronunciation. So, I, I don't know. I, I would love if games like this had a title screen where a voice just kind of said the name, you know, kind of like Resident Evil. But. That's not the case. Anyway, the game is a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up in the classic style, definitely pulling influence from games like Life Force or Salamander. The game has you shrink down and enter a patient's bloodstream, and you're trying to clear a virus from different parts of the body, with each organ representing another stage to clear. Each stage has a unique objective to fill, and how you perform will directly impact the health of the patient. As you play, you collect upgrade points, which can be applied to different aspects of your ship. The whole thing is pretty ambitious, but in my opinion, the game suffers from some choices made by the developers. Every stage opens with a dialogue section that you have to repeat every time you play the stage. There's no way to skip this, and if you're stuck on a difficult stage, you'll be seeing these opening dialogue screens a lot. Also, if you want to go back and select a different level, you have to go all the way back to the main menu and then start the game over to get to the level select screen. The upgrade system is kind of clunky too. There isn't really a great explanation of how it works in the game. And I found that the amount of grinding I had to do to get any basic upgrades was kind of frustrating. Certain levels require upgrades to complete, so it seems like in some cases you have no choice but to repeatedly replay the same easier levels to upgrade the stats to complete the harder levels. It, it's just kind of messy and I don't know, I, I have a patience for grinding. I, I love grinding. I mean, I spent a couple weeks <laughs> in Elden Ring just running around a field killing three giants, three or four giants, and, and collecting EXP off those. It's almost embarrassing to talk about how I don't mind spending like a two or three hour long play session just repeatedly killing the same group of low level enemies to grind in an RPG. I I'm really into that sometimes, <laughs> but in this game, it didn't quite do it for me. Overall, I think that choices like the ones I mentioned kind of obscure the game's potential. I would love to see these devs rebalance the game a bit, or maybe explore these concepts further in a follow-up game. Next up is Reloaded. That's right, the 1996 top-down shoot-em-up classic Reloaded from Gremlin Interactive, the same publishers who brought you bangers like Hate and Percy the Potty Penguin. You might remember this one. It was an MS-DOS game that also got a PlayStation port. I got this game DRM-free through Zoom Platform. And it came with a bunch of cool extras, like a lossless flak version of the soundtrack, 
and a scan of the comic book that came with the game. Reloaded got pretty negative reviews when it came out, and to be honest, I, I can see why. You kinda just wander around the map and shoot stuff. The controls aren't great, and the sound and graphics really aren't great either, but the game is very charming, and it's super over the top. The whole thing has its origins in the very edgy Vertigo imprint of DC Comics, and the character designs were worked on by people like Garth Ennis, who made Preacher, and Greg Staples, who worked on 2000 AD. Admittedly, it's repetitive, and it kinda does feel like a more poorly paced version of something like Gauntlet, but I'm still having a lot of fun with it, and I'm really glad that Zoom Platform goes out of their way to keep games like this from becoming abandonware. Next on the roundup list is something that I got out of a Capcom Humble Bundle. It's Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. I gotta be honest, this game was completely overwhelming and I put it down after just an hour. The bit that I did play somehow came off as really repetitive and shallow, while at the same time feeling very deep and complex in terms of advanced RPG mechanics. I might give this game another shot with a walkthrough, just to kind of get me started and more acclimated to the game world, but I don't really know if this one is for me at all. Let me know down in the comments if you played this game and if I'm just like being a baby, you know? I. I I feel like there's something here. I know it's a popular series, but I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know about this one. Not not uh, I don't want I don't want to write it off just yet, but I feel like if I say anything, I'm going to just make some alienating statement about the game. <laughs> Next up, we're entering the realm of VR. That was a VR visor. Uh, I've been playing a bit of Half-Life Alex through my Oculus Quest 2, hooked up via a big USB cable into my PC. I was waiting for this game for a long time. It's one of the main reasons I got a VR headset in the first place was this and Resident Evil 4 VR, and I knew it, that I would need a better PC to play it through, you know, through those means and everything to get it up and running, but... <sighs> I'm a lifelong Half-Life fan, and I got very mixed feelings about this game. I don't know. The, the game is cool, but there's something about it that leaves me feeling kind of indifferent. I enjoy VR to a degree, but I think that the best experiences I've had with it were either Super Hot VR or Resident Evil 4 VR. And even though Half-Life Alex looks great, something about it just really did not click with me. I, it, and I got a similar feeling from most VR games, especially the ones that have more realistic graphics and physics. I like exploring the world, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay usually just feels kind of clunky and, I don't know, just not as engaging as I want it to be. Maybe even less engaging than just playing Half-Life. I don't know. I'm curious what other people think about this one, so if you've played it, and especially if you've played like a bunch of other VR games, let me know what you think, because for a while I, I was told like this is kind of like the gold standard for VR, but... I've played a lot of VR games now, and this one is not ranking like super high for me in terms of the overall experience, but it is a, a technical, you know, show. I mean, my God, it looks great. The way the physics work, everything is super tight, but it, it just doesn't feel like a fun game to play, in my opinion. But let me know what you think.
Next up, I'm gonna talk about some games from Nintendo 64, the console I used to play when I was just a wee lad. Not a Nintendo wee lad, but I mean like when I was a little, little kid. Uh, I, I played a lot of N64, and I personally have found that N64 games are hard to go back to. Uh, controls are weird. Doing 3D without dual analog sticks is kind of weird. The graphics are pretty rough <laughs> for most N64 games. For most early era 3D games, they're pretty rough, but the N64 haze is pretty hard to go back to. And even as someone who was a, you know, an avid N64 player back in the day, the good games are good. The good games hold up. Mario Party, GoldenEye, Mario 64. I mean, there's a bunch of games that I think anyone would have fun with back then or today. But there's a lot of clunkers on that system that were clunkers even when they launched. You know, I'm I, not to be someone who's, you know, shitting on old games because they're not like new games. I, I love old games. Uh, and I try to put myself in that mindset when I'm playing old games, but I, I had that mindset when N64 was out. You know, I was there in the moment, and I still thought, ah, this doesn't look as good as fucking Super Mario World 2. You know what I mean? Anyway, a little while ago, Jordan and I made a video for the channel where we flipped through a December 1999 issue of GamePro. The cover featured Donkey Kong 64, a game that Jordan spoke pretty highly of. I absolutely love Donkey Kong Country, and I've never really given Donkey Kong 64 a fair chance. But after going through that issue of GamePro, I was feeling like it was time to really dip back into the N64 catalog, and I would start off with Donkey Kong 64. I got a couple of hours into it, but ultimately, I didn't love it. Like I said, this era of gaming is hard for me to go back to, but even back then, I, I was never huge into these sorts of 3D platformers. There was always something kind of clunky about the controls and the camera and figuring out the objectives that never really jived with me. And unfortunately, even after a few hours with this game, I don't think Donkey Kong 64 is anything that I'm going to get any deeper into. Although I do admit it's a very ambitious game, and I appreciate what Rare was trying to accomplish. Back then, when I was playing more N64, I was really into the console shooters like Duke Nukem, Turok, and Goldeneye. I decided to revisit Duke and Turok, and I could not believe how awkward those controls were. It's funny that I would find a game like Donkey Kong 64 awkward to control, but I had no issue back in the day with games like Turok and Duke Nukem 64. Thankfully, I soon learned that Turok has a solid PC port with improved controls. After the shooters, I fired up Cyber Tiger, another game that was featured in that issue of GamePro. I've really enjoyed a lot of the Tiger Woods PGA series of games, and I couldn't remember hearing about Cyber Tiger. Well, this really isn't anything like those PGA games. It's much more cartoony, and it's pretty awkward. I can't recommend it. Anyway, I know I kind of just shit-talked N64 platformers, but to round out my little N64 romp, I decided to try out Gex 64, which was also known as Gex Enter the Gecko when it was on the PlayStation. The game features writing from Robert Cohen, who had previously worked on The Simpsons. You might not be able to tell it by looking at him, but he was a big inspiration for the character of Milhouse. Oh. I hate these flood pants. Unfortunately, the humor here in Gex 64 really doesn't hold up as well as any of the episodes of The Simpsons that Cohen worked on. Gex repeats the same handful of lines in each stage. For the most part, these lines are dated pop culture references, but even if you get the reference, I don't think they always work. Like, there's this horror-themed level where Gex repeatedly says, reminds me of Halloween at Rip Taylor's. 
If you don't know, Rip Taylor was a flamboyantly gay comedian who would often throw confetti. This particular level is largely devoid of any comedy, homosexuality, or confetti. So I don't really get what Gex is referring to. I don't know how this stage would at all remind him of Halloween at Rip Taylor's. The same level features the line, don't take career advice from Joe Piscopo. Joe Piscopo is a right-wing talk radio type of guy who used to be a comedian and actor who was on SNL back in the early 80s. And while he didn't have a wildly successful career, for a long time, he was kind of a punching bag for people who saw his career as some sort of failure. While I understand people taking issue with his politics and his stances today, Gex 64 was made way before Joe made the transition into the, you know, right-wing talking head type. But regardless, even if you think that guy was a total goofball and failure, I don't see what that has to do with this Halloween horror-themed level. It, it just clashes and doesn't make any sense. It's kind of just like they were being mean to the guy for no reason. But, writing aside, the game is a lot of fun, and I think the platforming and combat hold up surprisingly well. Each level you visit has multiple objectives, kind of like in Mario 64. I'll say it one more time, the N64 can be kind of awkward to go back to, but I think that's because it was an awkward transition phase between 2D and 3D. A lot of developers were still really new to 3D, and a lot of the things that we take for granted as being standard in most 3D games were, were still being iterated and figured out, and it wasn't really standardized across the industry yet. But despite all that, I think Gex 64 is a pretty good game, and the controls and camera were easier for me to adjust to than the ones in Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> Now, I'm not necessarily saying that Gex 64 is a better game than Donkey Kong 64. I think that the scope and goals of each one is pretty different, but I did find Gex way easier to play, whereas Donkey Kong 64 felt way more awkward. But again, if you know anything about these games, you want to chime in about N64, Let's talk about it. I'm curious what other people think. I don't know if I'm being kind of a curmudgeon or, or not with uh, my views on the N64 era. The last title that I'll be covering today is a game called Pill Baby. It's a 2D stylish hack and slash platformer type game with a really intriguing narrative and some light RPG elements. Everything feels kind of floaty in Pill Baby, and I don't think that always works well for all games, but after a little while, I adjusted to the feel of it and I started to have a lot of fun. The game presents some really interesting visuals, and it does this sort of mixed media stuff every once in a while. I think it's a really unique game that might have sort of a niche appeal, but if this looks at all interesting to you, you're probably going to love it. This same development team has a bunch of different projects, one of which is Judero, a game that features an awesome stop-motion animation style and a story inspired by Scottish folklore. I backed this game on Kickstarter and I had a great time with the demo. It's another game that I think has more of a niche appeal, but again, there are a lot of cool ideas on display between both of these games, and if it at all looks appealing to you, you're probably going to want to check these out. Judero does have a free demo on Steam, so if you're curious, just hop on it. And with that, another roundup is in the books. So that's what I've been playing lately. I want to know what you've been playing. I, I Genuinely, I want to know what you've been playing. I'm really interested in learning about new games, and a lot of the games that I cover in these roundup videos are games that other people have suggested to me when they were playing them. So let's talk about video games together, okay? Meet me down in the comments. If you're in a position to help the channel grow, I'm choking my words. My mouth is so dry right now, I'm sorry. The weather's weird, I'm overtired. 
I'm overcompensating, but uh, if you're in a position to help the channel grow, check out our Patreon. We got channel memberships as well. There's a lot of ways to help us out, but the easiest thing you can do is a like and a subscribe. Hey, if you haven't checked out the Hidden Machine archives, why not start now? There's a bunch of videos for you to check out in our backlog, and we'll be back again soon with more uh, Hidden Machine gaming videos. God, I'm so exhausted. Ugh. But I love talking about games, you know? I'm doing this for the end screen. Um. God, I need some water. <laughs>